Well, this plot is really for educational and demonstration purposes. The, uh, the plot contains all corn, but different varieties, uh, ranging from, from commercial uh, field corn, like what 99% of the entire nation's corn acres are planted to, that we call field corn. So 99% of this plot is, is field corn, but we've separated the field corn into two different types. One is a conventional, uh, conventional traditional uh, corn variety, similar to what has been used for maybe the first 40 to 50 years primarily in corn production in the U.S. It's hybrid corn that's you know, developed from crossing you know, two parents that, that have desirable traits. Uh, and then we have genetically engineered corn, which uses a much more specific advanced technology to, to get those traits into a plant. Uh, there's great things are possible with that. So what we have is uh, we have the conventional on one side. We also have the, the genetically engineered on the, um, on the far half that includes uh, really important traits for, for efficient and environmentally friendly production in today's world. Okay, in addition to conventional field corn and genetically engineered field corn, we have, we've uh, inserted a small plot of white corn, which is the, the corn that's commonly used for milling for, for, you know, for baking and food production purposes and for direct human consumption. Uh, things such as tortillas are, you know, not generally made from, from field, from number two yellow field corn, but it's made from white corn. We have a plot of white corn in the center that divides the, the conventional from the genetically engineered. Also on each end of the conventional field plots, we have uh, a small plot of sweet corn and we have a small plot of popcorn. And uh, they're planted in the rough uh, uh, proportions uh, that 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 would match the percentage of of sweet corn and popcorn grown across the U.S. roughly one percent. Th this is essentially a garden, and the only the only real comparison between what happens here and what happens on you know the the roughly one and a half million acres in Colorado producing field corn is that I got to use a little piece of equipment here that, in a very rough sense, uh, you know has a few connections to the to the modern day equipment but it was really more really a better comparison to the type of equipment that was used uh, 20 to, to 50 years ago but it has the basics in a little a little seed hopper it has a little a little uh, furrow opener uh, a little disc inside that picks up the seed from the hopper and, and drops one every seven inches into the furrow it has a uh, yeah, a drag chain that that pulls a little soil into the groove that was opened by the by the uh, furrow opener, and then it has a press wheel that that presses the soil down uh, to make for to make a nice seed to soil contact, which is important in uh, in um, growing anything and getting a plant germinated and 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 off to a good start. We also we also want to highlight a couple uh, key relationships um, and that is uh, it is relate the amount of the amount of nutrients and water required to produce a corn crop in comparison to the average turf or, or sod that, that takes place really for decorative purposes across uh, thousands and thousands of acres in Colorado in the form of you know, yards, lawns, graf, grass, uh, golf courses, parks, uh, football fields. So it's it's no it's by design that this plot is right in the middle of our our yard here at the Colorado Corn Office. This this plot of corn will receive no additional fertilizer and no special considerations for watering beyond what's already in place for the lawn. And uh, uh, we do, you know, some of our work with Colorado Corn involves representing the industry in areas uh, related to water management and related to nutrient management. And we're often referring to the fact that, that 
corn production on a per acre basis actually uses significantly less in terms of nitrogen and, and nutrients required compared to the average, to, compared to what's applied to the average turf grass. Similarly, it uses much less water than is, than is typically applied on a lawn or golf car course or park. So we, uh, we think that's, that's viable and we intend to, to demonstrate that, a, that a, uh, on a small scale, yet in, on a proportional scale, that, we can, that corn can be produced, uh, a healthy corn crop can be produced with the same nutrients in water um, that, that is, or no more nutrients in water that is used on a typical lawn. Thank you.